NBA 2K24's fifth courtside report has just dropped and we have badge news finally. We have a glimpse at our builder and our badges, so let's hop right into it. La, la, yeah. la, la, wait till I give my money right. All right, first and foremost, I want to talk badge perks and performance multipliers. Can these performance multipliers and badge perks, which are season prizes, they say that the badge perks are rotational season prizes and the performance multipliers are also season prizes. Badge perks and performance multipliers are safety nets that can help you not lose your badge progress. Can these be obtained by having the season pass? That's a really good question to ask. We need an answer for that, Mike. I'm going to need to know if me getting the season pass can get me towards that any faster because I know that would be a considerable driving point towards most people buying that season pass or making the decision to shell out that 10 or 20 extra bucks per season. We can technically call that pay to win because at that point you would be shelling out some money to get a competitive edge towards not losing your badges faster than somebody else can lose theirs comment down below what you think about these badge perks and these performance multipliers being season prizes and potentially being able to be obtained a little bit faster than someone else can if you went ahead and bought the season pass okay now our badge perks in question are overdrive which increases badge level progression in games immunity which slows down badge level regression in games drill savant which increases badge level progression in team practice facility. Scholar, a risk and reward perk that gives a significant increase in badge level progression for PvP games, finished with a high teammate grade. However, it comes with a risk. You'll receive no progression for the badge if you do not finish with a high teammate grade. Then we have Winner's Circle, a risk and reward perk that gives additional boost and badge level progression for PvP games that result in a win. However, if you lose, you get zero progression. Then we have high risk. High risk is a risk and reward perk that increases your badge level progression for PvP games with badge usage, but accelerated regression with lack of usage. At the risk and reward level, it sounds like we'll have a really good time gambling our badge points. But either way, I'm ready to dive in and get to using these badges to see exactly how they play out. Let me know how you feel about high risk and reward, winner circle and scholar being risk and reward perks that can help you accelerate or take away from your badge progression. And then we have our performance multipliers. These are prizes that unlike badge perks provide benefits to all of your equipped badges at one time as long as you meet the challenges necessary for the multiplier in its respective game mode. Each of the three performance multipliers has four versions. So for every multiplier, you have a version for the NBA, a version for the city, a version for the rec, and a version for pro-am. That's a total of 12 multipliers you get, three for each game mode. Now, the first multiplier is grade A student. That gives you a boost on your badge level progression if you finish the game with a high teammate grade. And then we have winner takes all. That gives you a badge level progression boost in games where you finish with a win. And then we have up for the challenge. That gives you accelerated boost for your badge level in games played against tougher opponents. I wonder what tougher opponents actually means though. How tough do they have to be? We'll just have to wait and see. Okay, and then the last perks that we have are called floor setters. Now you get 18 floor setter slots in total. And what floor setters are, are powerful prizes that are earned via season XP. And they're included with the free base pass each season. So you get a total of nine silver and nine gold floor setters. Adding a floor setter to a badge will prevent the badge from ever dropping below the listed badge level. If your badge has not progressed to the level of the floor setter, if your player can progress beyond the listed floor setter badge level, they will not be prevented from doing so. So what floor setters are gonna do are guarantee that the badges that you need to be a certain level stay a certain level for you to play your game your way. And the best part about these are, like they said, they're included in the base free season pass. 
All right, so as far as the My Player Builder, it looks like the same traditional builder that we've been using for the past three or four years. It has all the same slots I can tell as the previous builder from 23. It also has position, height, weight, and wingspan. I see a few of the badges that are making a return as far as clamps, ankle breaker, challenger, pick dodger, workhorse, off ball pest. But what I wanna point out to you about this builder is that this year, 2K is giving you set builds that you can pick from. They're giving you templates that you can use to start out your player. Now you can take these templates and use them traditionally straight out without changing them, or you can modify these templates to your liking to make a player that you feel like you can dominate with. Now, one thing you're going to notice when you get into your My Player Builder and get to building your player, once you get to the takeover process, it's not going to be there. Now, how takeovers are going to work, you're going to be choosing your takeover in real time in game. When you fill up your takeover meter, that is when you're going to pick. Once you punch the button, they're going to allow you to pick from a pop up menu what takeover you'll need at that particular time. That makes things way more versatile to make you a whole different animal, but the same beast. And as far as archetype improvements go, 2K has put more emphasis on preventing meta builds, which means we're not gonna see the 6-9 epidemic again. Attribute caps for various size combinations saw a positive overhaul and max heights and weights were updated per position. Also, they put a focus on the archetype naming system to ensure the names are as descriptive as possible to the player. That's a plus. I'm really looking forward to seeing some better names and some more descriptive names to the players that we can make and get a better variation out of who we can get out there and spin with. Go ahead and bang the comments and let me know what your build is going to be called. I already got my build name picked out. It would be great if 2K would let us name our builds ourselves, right? If I could name my build, I would be the Llama Wimbenyama, the long arm of the law, Lanky Jones himself. We're going to be out here doing some big things, ladies and gentlemen. Bang it down in the comment section, though. What's your build name? All right, so hit that subscribe button and make sure you bang the bell icon so you can get the notification when I start dropping these build videos. All right, I don't want to make this video too long, so I'm going to separate the new 24 badges into a whole different short video for you guys to take. So make sure you bang that bell notification button so that you can get the notification when I drop that as soon as possible. The last thing we want to talk about are the badge tiers. This is going to be pretty short and simple. They have separated your badges into tiers of importance. So you have a S tier for your most important badges, and then you have your A tier, B tier, and C tier badges, which are determined by a player's height. And each of these badges has a unique set of attribute requirements for unlocking the badge. Okay, so that's the NBA 2K24 badge and player builder information that I have for you today. But I want you to go down in the comment section after you like the video and subscribe to the page and let me know how do you feel about the performance multipliers and the badge perks? What do you think would be the most successful way to go about ensuring not losing your badge progression? And last but not least, how do you feel about badge perks and performance multipliers being season rewards that could possibly give a certain edge to players who buy the season pass. Your booze mean nothing. I've seen what makes you cheer.